do you want to tell them? Or I think they already know. What are we telling them? About the day we're getting a Sony Xperia Z2. Yeah, you've always cared for technology more than me. beginning so <laughs> yesterday was my birthday and Rose proposed to me so I'm sure you're all wanting to know about what happened so I'm gonna tell you Rose has been vlogging secretly for like the past month about this and I've been completely unaware so there are still some things that even I don't know so today is the 3rd of May and I have decided to ask Rosie to marry me on her birthday at the end of the month. Uh, Rosie, you have no idea this is going to happen because I've been doing such a Chandler Bing lately and pretending marriage is completely off the cards for the moment. Um, I really hope that it doesn't backfire and you don't find someone who wants to marry you uh, like that in the space of a month. It's entirely possible. Um, I want to tell you that I am so in love with you and you are the most wonderful, creative, good-looking, intelligent, spiritual, positive, energetic person I have ever met and I love you with everything that I've got and you are just the most incredible thing to have ever happened to my life and I can't imagine or would want to imagine living it with anybody else. Um, you're so funny. You're so funny. You are just the most beautiful thing. <laughs> Emma Carlyle is the first person to know and the only person to know at this point because I love her so much and, um, and I know that she's going to help me in a huge, huge way. Um, because she's my best friend and she loves us both and we love her too and I'm getting upset <laughs> ever since Ros Weglin and everything that happened on that day I just really thought to myself why wait any longer because you're all I want you've you you've always been all I've ever wanted and I honestly don't see why we're waiting any anymore. I know you didn't want to wait. Um, and I know that was me. And I'm done now. So I'm done. <laughs> God, how am I going to do it on the day? Can't even keep my shit together now. I love you. And, um, this is your proposal video. I love you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. Hi. Thanks. <laughs> Rosie and Rose are my right there. Rosie, when you and Rose met and I was there, I was really cross at Rose for taking off that ghost costume as soon as we got into the village hall. But now I'm glad that she took it off and revealed her face to you so that you could meet face to face, not ghost to face. <laughs> His bum smiles! I've got notes on my phone. It says, when you met, and then the next one is glad. <laughs> I'm so glad. She's oh, she's bringing such me. Far. Hold on a second, let me just turn her off. I can't make my own dinner! <laughs> How to turn the mic web on? Okay, love you, bye! Oh, okay. just so you know, you are so needy. I am so honoured to be part of this... What am I part of? <laughs> Proposal. I'm proposing to Rosie, Emma. <laughs> so, it is the 6th of May, and, um... I'm getting prepped, so to speak. Two days ago, I went for a Sunday roast dinner at Emma Carlyle's house, and um, simultaneously, I took a little trip to your mum and stepdad's, and um, I saw your mum, and the excuse I gave to you was that I was giving Izzy one of Emma Carlyle's bum prints, which was true, 
but at the same time I also asked her if it would be okay if I asked you to marry me on your birthday and honestly she was thrilled. <laughs> when you're at work tomorrow Emma Carlyle's coming round and we're actually going ring shopping again because I couldn't make up my mind today and I know you said don't get me a ring or save your money but you can't propose without a ring and you know I can't just give you a hula hoop. I went into Waterstones today um, to do some shopping for your birthday and um, I saw this kind of like horoscope book with every date of the of the year in it and I read mine and it said um, <laughs> You're quite intellectual and you surround yourself with funny and creative people. Also, you're going to have a fantastically happy married life. And then I looked at yours and it said, you're hot headed and angry, but you're always sorry straight afterwards. And I was like, oh, it's so true. But um, I felt really good about that afterwards because they were so entirely accurate. I thought this is the right decision. So fingers crossed I don't collapse on the day because, you know, big occasion. Falls down, stops breathing. <laughs> What's fantastic is that you have absolutely no idea, but you haven't shut the fuck up about marriage for the last week and it's been really difficult for me. So thanks for nothing. Um, I love you and I will see you soon. Someone's home, it could be you. Rose has been my best friend now for seven years and I'm so glad that you're now my best friend too. You both mean the world to me, but I know that you both mean the world to each other. And it's really nice to be part of this group. I'm telling you this now. You will never ever find anybody better than Rose. Because you're fat and you're ugly and you're an ugly crier. And I am this is this is Iglesias. Individually, you are both fantastic. Rose always can make me laugh. Rosie, you're always there for me, advice-wise, you always know what to say. Um, I couldn't ask for two better people to be in my life. But <laughs> together, you just make the perfect team. And when I see one of you without the other, it feels really weird. Like, you're such a double act. And I wouldn't want either of you to be anywhere else but in each other's vaginas. <laughs> Forever. That's what marriage is, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Emma and I just went ring shopping around Worcester and we actually found the perfect one. I could, I tried it on. It didn't fit on my fat fingers, but I tried it on. And it, it just, oh, I got that tingly, not tingly. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I got that excited feeling when I tried it on and it was the one. It was the one. I thought it was as well. And we went to a few shops and they all looked tacky and shit so we went to this great great shop in Worcester and I knew pretty much as soon as I put it on that was the one so yay <laughs> so I just went back to the shop to get your ring resized to size I so your little rodent fingers will fit into it and I was a bit like oh about the people there because they were quite old and I thought oh, okay they're gonna ask me who it's for and what the occasion is and they said so who's it for what's the occasion and I said, oh, it's an engagement ring. And they went, oh, who's getting married? And I went, oh, I am. And they were like, oh, and I was like, oh. And I said to them, you know, walking around some of the high street shops, you never really know what kind of reception you're going to get when you're like, you know, I'm a girl, I'm proposing to a girl. And sometimes there have been occasions where you do get treated differently. But these people must have been older than my mum by at least 10 years. They must have been about 70. And that's mean. They were probably about 50. Anyway, they were the older generation and she said to me, oh, my daughter's been with her partner for the last 20 years. And I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. And then we had this massive bonding session about how it's been such a struggle. And um, and in, in return, they actually knocked off some money. <laughs> not off the actual ring, Rosie, off the resizing of the ring. I'm not a cheapskate, but I will spill my emotional story to get money off something if I must. <laughs> Me and Pillow Lady wish you all the best of luck for the future. Can't wait to be a part of it. Both of us. She's not coming to the wedding. She's my plus one. I wish you all the best in your farm and in your life. Obviously, I'm not going to be leaving it anytime soon. Watching, waiting, anticipating. I don't know 
was the words. I couldn't have written it better myself. It's okay. almost like you told me what to say the whole time. I know. <laughs> Dear Rosie, you should say yes to Rosie's proposal for the following reasons. One, well, I don't know if you should say yes or not, because seriously, she wrote me on Twitter saying, or fuck her, we could get married, it's up to you, haha, <laughs> okay, love you, bye. So I think she just also proposed to me, so... You better marry her quick. Ah! Thanks for coming, and I'm just gonna get back to uh, reading. Are your mummy's gonna get married? Are your mummy's gonna get married? Concentrate. Get with the program. It's really difficult when you're trying to organise a proposal for someone and they say, um, oh, are you going to propose on my birthday? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. Tomorrow I'm going to tell Tom that I'm going to propose on your birthday and I know he's going to have something really silly to say about it and I can't wait to tell him. <laughs> um, I might take one of their babies. I'm proposing tomorrow. Flynn, what do you think about that? He's purring. That's a good sign. So Emma's done the drawing and Emma's about to frame the drawing. Rosie's at home um, being afraid of the dark on her own. <laughs> oh my God, it's gonna look so good. Oh my God, it looks amazing. No sneaksies. Okay, no sneaksies. <laughs> We are in the League and Arms Hotel in Broadway and it's Rosie's birthday. And we went here last year. Well, we went here last year and um, she's 24 today. We just ordered a massive, massive lunch. <laughs> and um, I'm really looking forward to giving her a present afterwards. Nice special surprise. So that should be really, really good. Um, this is like the nicest place close to our home, isn't it? Um, yeah, and it's got lots of good memories because we came in last year and Rose fell in love with me even more. <laughs> it was Rosie's 24th birthday and I took her down to the League and Arms Hotel in Broadway in the Cotswolds, which, which is really, is really nice. Also probably while we'll get married. Yes, I should think it probably would be. It probably will be. Um, and I thought, how am I going to do this without her knowing? So I thought... Hang on, Aunt, why did you take me there? Because we went there last year. Last year on my birthday. And, and we had a romantic spa weekend. We fell more in love with each other, didn't we? Yeah. I didn't really know what to get her, but I'd <sighs> known for like a month or two maybe that I was going to ask her to marry me because... Um, How did you know? Because I couldn't think of another gift. I decided to call upon my best friend Emma Carlyle for her fantastic illustration skills and I asked her to do a drawing for me so that it was actually a proposal that Rosie could unwrap as opposed to a kind of like contrived lead up to me going down on one knee which isn't really my style yeah. because I've got a bad knee and I, I fear that if I went down I wouldn't be able to get back up Oh, and that's why you never go down I thought it was a really nice original way to do it and I know that I wanted to involve Emma so much because obviously she's my best friend and she mm. loves us and we love her. And I was really happy with it because if you'd have said words, because it was so like, I didn't trust shocking. myself enough to say but, words. But also I would have forgotten and I wouldn't have remembered it exactly, but because you just gave me the picture, I've got it forever. Unless I burped it, you'd remember that. Frightened to marry you like I'm frightened for what you'll do. Why? Hi everybody, thank you for coming to my fantastic wedding. I look fantastic. Eyes on me. So, I'm joined here by my lovely new wife. Why am I that side? I'm right here. Rosie. And we just want to say on behalf of each other that we couldn't have had this special day without all of you attending, but we're really happy that we look far better than all of you. Dessert wine is out. Thank you, Consuela. I'm putting all the bridesmaids in Fritz Bernays. No. They're wearing Fritz no. Bernays. No, I like this one. It has pockets. You can like do this. You can twirl. Twirl. Oh my god. It suits everybody. It's, it's comfortable. comfortable. When we got there, um, it was really, really, really nice. And I was like, it's not a cocktail. Yeah, drinks on me. But have you got any money for the car park? And she did. Thank yeah, I had four pounds. I didn't budget for the old car part there. Um, and we had some Bloody Marys and we were chilling in the bar, which was really, really old and real nice. And we were like, excuse me. We ate our food in the bar and I was getting a bit nervous because I thought, shit, if it starts raining, I want to propose in the beautiful gardens of the League and Arms. It was really overcast. It was going to rain. Exactly. It? And if it rains, I'm absolutely fucked. I'm going to have to do it in the car park. 
we walked up past the perfectly sculpted trees and um, we sat in this little booth. It's like one of those trellis uh, benches that has all the roses mm. sort of like all around it. They were pretty. like, the roses were shedding petals and there's rose petals everywhere. Not dissimilar to a fairy tale. Yeah, there was a bit of bird shit, but... We sat down and I said, Rosie, this is a perfect place for you to open your present. And so I gave it to her, and obviously in a frame it looked a bit like a book, so I was like, don't worry, Yeah, because it had wrapping paper on it, didn't it? And she sat down, and she looked really nervous, so I thought, oh, I think she might have an idea this is going to happen. But obviously I had the ring in my pocket, so I was kind of like fumbling around a little bit, but then she looked at me and I was like... Yeah. You st I looked at you and you stopped, I just thought you were doing this with your jacket. Yeah. So I thought, okay. Sure. Yeah, well, I covered that up pretty well. Yeah. Um, so I was fumbling around Where the ring. Where was it in your jacket? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Where was it, though? My pocket. What pocket? Exactly. So Rosie unwrapped the drawing, and luckily it was actually face down, so once she unwrapped it, she then had to turn it over, and I was, yeah. I was fumbling in my pocket, but trying not to look like a, a dick. Um, so and I did it slowly, didn't you I? Did I unwrapped it, slowly. it, and it was like, right, You turned what is it, it around. Turned it around. And you said to me, Is this real life? Yeah, I said, is this real life? <laughs> and I said, no. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, me, I don't know what to say. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Ignore my ex. Oh, you know what? It really suits you. I really love it. Do you? Are you happy? Yeah. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Are you happy? I love you so much. You look so pretty. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is this real? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I couldn't believe it was finally happening. I and couldn't then... believe it. I thought, no, surely I've got to wait another year for and this. And then you were like. Uh, uh, and I was like, oh my god, she's not said yes, and it's been at least four seconds. And I was like, oh my god, seriously, I'm like, <laughs> no, seriously, I've gone to all this effort, like, <laughs> <laughs> you can't say no now. Yeah, and then you went, yes, yes, I'm okay. Do you like where we did it? Yeah. Because this is special to us here. Yeah, this is where we are going to get married. Although, you know, the lawnmower could have been fucking quieter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. he heard me. There's a guy over there. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, I'm gonna go. I love you. I love you too. It's gonna be fine. Just don't look disappointed. You've got to look really happy with whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It's fine. She's not gonna propose. And I thought, unless it's a picture saying, will you marry me? So when, when we sat down and I unwrapped it and it was a picture frame, I thought, oh my God. And I turned over. And when I, it was, I was like, lose weight. Love Rose. So how does it feel being my fiancé? A bit heavier. You feels really good. I'm not a ball and chain yet. You don't make that joke until I'm a wife. Oh no, I made that joke like a week after we started dating. Now you're you're just you know I'm, I'm used to it. It's like when you you know when you carry things in your bag for a really long time and you take your bag off. You've become you still accustomed feel like, to the weight. Yeah. yeah, that's how I feel about you. So I really want to thank from the bottom of my heart everybody involved in my proposal for keeping it quiet and doing such an amazing job. So Emma Carlyle, thank you so much for your piece of artwork that, you know, not only made me be a fiancé with Rose and one day be a wife, but it's also obviously a memory and a piece of art that I'll treasure forever. So thank you so much Emma because I think it was the best way in the world to propose and I wouldn't have wanted it any other way and we couldn't have done it without you, so thank you so much. Happiest day of my life. I tweeted that and I meant it. It was the best day of my life. Apart from my wedding day, but that hasn't happened yet, so... Oh god, I'm going to let you down the wedding day. I'm oh god, I've don't got the, I got the proposal right. Uh, I can't get them both right, Rosie. I'll say something stupid. I'll meet someone uh, whose, you know, spouse is deceased and I'll be like, Oh, <laughs> where's Jill? And then they'll be like, oh... Jill's dead. Jill's, Jill, Jill's been dead for and I'll be like, oh, you're on table number 24. Happy birthday to you. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Oh. Happy birthday to you, Rosie. Happy birthday to you. Ready? Like okay, wait. Don't I don't know what to wish for now because it's come true. So, babies. Ah! <laughs>